many different use cases of how Moodle is being used uh, in different classrooms, different schools, so practical uses. But um, for this last lecture of the day, I'd like to invite you to take a look at the possible feature of Moodle. So um, I'll be talking about the feature of a mobile Moodle. Um, first of all, why am I even talking about this? Well, because in the last few years, there's been uh, quite a revolution in the market of mobile devices. When I say mobile devices, I mostly mean smartphones, like um, the iPhone, although this is an iPod Touch, um, tablet computers, you might have heard of Apple coming out with a really uh, interesting tablet computer recently. And what's unique about these devices? Well, first of all, uh, they allow us to uh, consume the internet, and Google, of course, as you know, is part of the internet, in a quite a new way, uh, because it provides a more intimate experience with the whole content. Because, you know, even these touch interfaces, it's quite a different thing than just using a keyboard or mouse. Or mouse. You can actually pet your device, you know, develop a real personal relationship. And it's different than what you do on desk from computers. Plus, there are all these different sensors, like motion sensors. You know, when I turn my iPods around, uh, the screen also, you know, detects that and moves the content. Uh, plus, you know, there are things like shaping device will make the device fetch new data. It's a whole new experience. And please don't try that with your laptops or <laughs> No shaking. Uh, an important thing uh, is that uh, they're more affordable and easier to use. Uh, let me ask you something. How many of you brought your laptops today with you? So, a few. How many of you have your mobile phones with you? Yeah. Or should I ask, who doesn't? Uh, and this is important because um, mobile phones actually enable us to uh, access internet from basically anywhere. If we, you know, if there are um, cellular networks nearby, we can get onto the internet. And this is an important fact. Um, something before was mentioned, mentioned the have-nots, you know, students that don't have computers at home. But, well, actually they do. They do have their cell phones and they can get on the internet. And I, th I think this isn't be being used um, enough in education. And um, these are some interesting prediction predictions that were recently made, um, comparing the number of desktop internet users to the number of mobile internet users. And currently, you know, we still have more people accessing internet on uh, their desktops, but as you can see, mobile internet is growing really rapidly, and within five years, there will be more people accessing internet through things like this. Smartphones that are basically really tiny but quite powerful computers. And this, of course, brings a lot of new educational possibilities. I'd like to hear a briefly mention an interesting case study of a mobile history city game developed in ne Netherlands. It's called Frequency 1515. Uh, and it's basically a game that students play in Amsterdam. So they went out with their cell phones. And as they walk by uh, around the city, they have different assignments. So, for example, when they reached a historically important street, they had to solve a quiz. Or they had to take photos, write some text, and upload it um, on their system. And every time they did that, they collected some, po some points. Uh, and as they collected enough points, they became uh, citizens of Amsterdam, which is also related to some historical facts. And what the researchers found out is that students that learned in this way in the city through their mobile phones, actually learned more than students that were stuck in classrooms doing regular project-based learning. Uh, and this is because, you know, these students were really uh, embedded into the real environment. And we all know that if we do something uh, with our own hands, uh, we really learn um, a lot more. And I think mobile phones um, could help us with that. So, um, and how it is with mobile phones and Moodle? Well, we all love Moodle on our desktops. We have lots of screen space, um, lots of space for our eyes to explore. We can cram in a lot of resources, side blocks, whatnot. But if you ever try using Moodle on your mobile phone, it's just, it sucks. 
I mean, even off on, you know, smartphones that have a bigger screen, it's all crammed up, and if you want to use any, anything, you have constantly to zoom in, zoom in, zoom out, and, you know, really try hard to click on the right links. Um, so what I wanted to do was actually find out um, if there is a better way, you know, a more user-friendly way to use mobile on mobile devices. Okay, yeah. <laughs> please close. <laughs> No, if you need it, it's, it's, I know. I'm from Copper, so I know how these things go. <laughs> okay, so very basically, there are two things we can do. One thing, the most basic thing, is to make a mobile-friendly version of Moodle. So a Moodle that works better on mobile phones. And I found several examples of this. Um, for example, Emily in Moodle, an interesting project that provides a um, Java-based application that works on feature phones and also a browser-based application uh, that will work on any phone with a mobile browser. Um, there are also several uh, applications um, that bring Moodle to iPhone, also plans for Androids and Blackberries. And uh, how do these thi things work? Well, usually you have to install something on your Moodle server, so when you get um, on when you type in the URL of your Moodle site on your mobile phone, uh, Moodle will know, okay, this is a mobile device, I'll display a different version. And as you can see uh, from these screenshots, it's really Moodle stripped down. No side blocks, no, I don't know, labels, anything. You know, just the main core content. Topics, resources, quizzes, just the basics. Um, but of course, while this is important to have, I was more interested in finding some modules that uh, could use all the different capabilities of mobile devices, like the smart sensors, GPS receivers. Um, and to be honest, I didn't find that much. Uh, one of the most interesting things I found is um, a component of the Emily Moodle, um, Mobile Learning Environment Moodle, uh, that enables teachers to create a special type of resource. Uh, and what you do is actually create this two-dimensional barcode that can be scan scanned with any modern phone with a camera. So what you do is take a picture of this barcode and um, with the right software, of course I forgot to mention that, uh, but the software is free, and then the software um, will detect which URL, web address, the barcode is pointing to. And it will open the address in your mobile phone. So, an interesting um, case study of that. So, let's say you have some printed materials to give, that you give out to your students in class. You can include these barcodes at the bottom, uh, and they can contain links, for example, to a Moodle quiz that you create. So you have some resources, some text, and at the end, when students want to test their knowledge, they just scan the barcode and they can take the quiz right on their mobile phones. Um, and this, this is interesting because, you know, I think most of your students already have mobile phones that are able to process things like that. Um, and, you know, they don't have laptops that they can bring um, with them to school. Uh, so, this is an interesting uh, tool for teachers and it's relatively easy to use. Even if you don't use the Emily Moodle model, um, there are free websites that can generate these codes for you um, so you can start using it. <laughs>